Dear members of the UN Security Council, I would like to thank the organizers of the discussion on media freedom in Belarus. Since September, the situation in Belarus hasn't improved. It has only worsened. The protest against the fraudulent election in Belarus has been expressly peaceful. However, the regime responded with violence. Free media has helped to shed light on what is happening. Unlawful detentions, torture, and murder of peaceful protesters. And this made the media a target for Lukashenko's repression machine. In 2020, according to the Belarusian Association of Journalists, independent journalists were detained over 470 times. 97 journalists saved administrative arrests. 50 media websites were blocked. And 15 journalists are currently facing false criminal charges. Among them are three fearless female journalists, Daria Chultsova, Katerina Andreeva, and Katerina Borisevich, who have been in prison for two months already. They are being charged with organizing mass protests and disclosing medical information about Roman Bandarenko, a protester killed by regime's cronies. They are only guilty of doing their job and telling the truth. Among them are four members of Press Club Belarus and its founder, Yulia Slutskaya. Among them is well-respected journalist Andrei Alexandrov and his partner Irina Zlobina. They are guilty of doing their work to support the media and victims of political repressions. Among them is Igor Losik, administrator of a popular social media channel in Belarus. He has been on hunger strike for over a month. He is only guilty of telling the truth. My husband, Sergei Tikhanovsky, a prominent video blogger, is charged with organizing mass protests, but he is guilty of telling the truth and running for president. His two children and I haven't seen him for almost eight months. Media under regime's assault is just part of the bigger picture of repression in Belarus, where more than 32,000 people have been detained, about 900 suspects in political motivated criminal cases, 400 cases of torture reported by the UN, and eight activists dead in relation to state violence. Not a single government official has been held responsible. In spite of this violence, Belarusians continue protesting every day. They demonstrate courage, dignity, and resilience. I call on the UN to take a vocal stand to stop the violence and lawlessness in Belarus, including censorship of media, blocking of websites, internet shutdowns, and cancellations of journalist accreditations. I call on the UN to convene a meeting of the Security Council and put Belarus on the agenda as the country is approaching six months of political crisis. The world needs to pay attention to this crisis that can outgrow its boundaries. I call on the UN to support the recommendations of the OSCE Moscow Mechanism Report. This will pave the way to create conditions for political dialogue that will help conduct free and fair elections. Our peaceful protest is not only the fight for freedom and dignity in Belarus, but also a critical test for international democracies. Thank you. Long live Belarus.